guys it's rachel here welcome back to another video now i wanted to do a video talking to you about my favorite comic books that i've been reading recently even i get bored of playing video games and watching netflix and hulu and tv and all that stuff leave a comment down below some of the comic books you're reading and you can suggest for me so i can check them out too because like i said i'm pretty bored out here just playing games so i like to read comic books in my free time if I don't feel like watching TV. But before I get to the video, if you haven't already, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post videos twice a week, every Friday and Sunday on my channel. Hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I make a video. And follow me on my social media down below. Give this video a like and a thumbs up if you're into comic books just like me. Without further ado, let's get started. So first off, the first comic book that I've, that I've been obsessed with <laughs> for the past month and a half is called Invincible. It's created by Cory Walker. And Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman also created The Walking Dead so if you're into The Walking Dead and you you love that you're probably gonna like this even though it has nothing to do with zombies. <laughs> Basically Invincible is about a boy his name is Mark Grayson and his dad is a superhero. He's basically like Superman in the book and when he turns 17 he inherits the same superpowers that his dad has and the comic book series just follows his life of him inheriting these superpowers and being a superhero and how it conflicts with his like romantic life, his friendships, his relationship with his family, and et cetera, et cetera. So basically, he grows up knowing his dad's a superhero and he's excited that he got his own powers, but the the the, the, the where the, st the story takes a turn is his dad, although he's a superhero, he comes from this planet um where he comes from this planet of superior of these strong warrior fighters and he was sent to earth to take over earth and conquer it and make it a slave planet so as soon as mark got his powers his dad you know tried to talk to talk him into hey son you know we're not from this planet we need to take it over and make earth our slave <laughs> and of course mark is like you're crazy and they get into this huge fight and before his dad kills him he has second thoughts and escapes to different planets so when his dad leaves he has to really step up and become the earth's new protector and the story just follows him you know taking on college being a superhero and dealing with his dad being gone and it's just a great great comic book one of the things i enjoy so much about this is the artwork if you haven't heard of ryan otley He's the one who did the illustration, the pencil work for this comic book, and I am obsessed with his work. Like, it is amazing, like, the way he, like, his art is so, so good. Like, if you, Brian Otley also did, does the work for Spider-Man as well, so he also does artwork for that comic book if you want to check it out. But one of the best things about this comic book is, like I said, if you're into superheroes, you're probably going to like it because it has a bunch of fights. It's really bloody, really violent. Um, it's also very funny, very humorous. And the storytelling was just really well, well written. Robert Kirkman is a great, great writer. And one of the reasons why I think the story lasted so long because of just the, the story, like, just the whole adventure that Mark has and the stuff that got thrown at him and the plots and the different story arcs were just amazing. If you're into superheroes, this is the one for you. I highly recommend Invincible. Second on my list is Venom. Now, I'd never read the comic books of Venom ever before. This is my first experience reading it, and I was so impressed. This this specific Venom series that I'm reading is so good because of just how dark it is. Like I said, if you're not familiar with Venom, basically, Eddie Brock was a reporter, and he had a good life until he got involved in this one investigation behind this shady lab and that's when he met the symbiote and then like turned into venom and stuff like that but this the beginning of this series takes place after that so it's like a, it's assumed you already know his his origin story and you just get just thrown into like his his life about how he's dealing with having a crazy alien take over his body and fill it with murderous thoughts and oh god i just one of the things i liked so much about the comic book is just how dark it was for one, the fights that he had with himself, and just his character flaws of him like being this monster, but he's trying to fight it. So that's one of the things about Venom that I really related to in this book about like 
everyone viewing you as this monster, but you really just, you're just trying to do the right thing. So I loved Venom. Like I said, the story is amazing. Um, if you're a Venom fan in general, you're probably going to like it. And if you're not afraid of dark stuff and weird aliens, you're probably gonna like this story. It's it's really interesting. It's 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 a, it's a page turner. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the illustration. I think it's well put out and written. And I don't think Venom has been presented in, in this type of way. So really amazing. I'm obsessed with Venom. Artwork is sick. Next on my list is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, if you watched Into the Spidey Verse, right there, that comic book, that that movie, so amazing. If you watched Spider-Man Into the Spidey Verse, then you're probably familiar with Miles Morales. Um, it's basically, the, it's basically the same thing. He gets bitten by a radioactive spider and becomes the next Spider-Man. Um, except he's he's in Brooklyn while Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man, is in Queens. So it's like two different Spider-Mans and how he's dealing with being Spider-Man. One of the things I like the most about this is, one, he's Afro-Latino. So he, it has a bunch of different influences from black culture and Hispanic culture because he's both black and Hispanic at the same time. So to throw in some some Spanish slang in there and his family dynamics is uh, between his parents and him is very apparent they're very close family and his relationship with his friends as well you can tell it's heavily influenced by New York and hip-hop culture which I'm a huge fan. <laughs> huge fan. They did a good job with making Miles like his features from his hair to his lips and his whole body and the way he dresses like it's really spot on and did their research about it. So basically the difference between the movie and the comic book movie no one knew he was Spider-Man not even his, his family and he didn't get in tune with his powers until the very end of the movie and the comic book his parents and his uncle know that he's Spider-Man and unlike the movie, his uncle doesn't die. His uncle's still alive in the comic book and he knows he's Spider-Man and they're very close. He's still caught up in criminal activity, but it's kind of complicated. If you enjoyed Miles Morales the movie, you will enjoy this comic book with a few different changes, but if you don't mind the differences, I mean, you can't even tell. It's, it's still like a slight difference, but it's still the same story essentially. Still a young black kid who's Spider-Man trying to adjust to his powers while living up to the great name of Spider-Man. With, he has a lot to balance with his secret identity and going to school at the same time. Fourth on my list of comic books I want to recommend to you is Once in Future. So if you if you're familiar with the with the with King Arthur and the movie the Disney movie uh, I think it's called Arthur and the Sword of the Stone, something like that. Um, it's basically a twist on that. The King Arthur from the you know from Britain and stuff like a different twist on it in comic book style. So basically the story starts off with the, the lead character Duncan going on a blind going on a date with this girl that goes terribly. And in the middle of the, the date, his grandma calls him like, Hey grandson, I need you to pick me up. So it's like he has to leave the date to go get his grandma. He kinda looks kind of lame. And his grandma's in the middle of this forest and he's like, Grandma, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in, in the nursing home. And his grandma's this badass, tough bitch who's like, shut up, grandson, I'm, I'm trying to take you somewhere. And he's like, where are you taking me? He takes him to this bunker full of guns and weapons, and they get transported to a different world with dinosaurs and mythical creatures. And he's basically, they go back in times, like the medieval times, with crazy animals and stuff. And he's thrown into this fight between him and this monster and his grandma's like sit still son and she like kills this animal right in front of him and he's like grandma what are you doing and she basically explains the whole origin of her story how she grew up being this this monster hunter and she was she's training him to take over for her basically and these bad people are trying to revive king arthur and they're trying to prevent him from being Revive. He gets resurrected anyway, and they're trying to prevent him from getting more powerful. The things I like most about this comic book is the illustration. Like it's done by Dan Mara, who also did the illustration for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So if you read Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, he's the same illustrator who did the work for that. His artwork is sick, and it was just so well drawn out. And the storyline is so cool. It's so interesting because you're wondering like how what his grandma's like 
a badass bitch. Like, how is she this tough? And her grandson is like this sweet, sweet boy who's like, Grandma, why are we killing people? And like, it's like, what? <laughs> so, I enjoyed the comic book. I thought it was well thought out, a cool, cool idea. So if you're into like mystical creatures and like stuff from the past and mystery, you're probably gonna be into this one too. And last but not least, uh, one of my favorite comic books ever. Team and T and Jenica. I made two videos about Team and T. I made one this year about the the crossover from Team and T and Mighty Morphin, and then last year I made a video about Jenica and Team and T. So I'll post links of both of those videos so you can check them out for yourself. But yes, t the Team and T comic book uh, put out by IDW Publishing is sick. If you've watched Team and T. It's the same thing, but a comic book form basically. But I would say the comic book's a little, it's more mature than the TV version that they put on TV for children. So if you don't mind the mature content of the Team and T that you'll be reading, you'll probably be into it. And then Jenica too. I've been reading Jenica. There's only one, one book out from Jenica, <laughs> which I enjoy. So yeah, Team and T is like the classic for turtles and they get into all types of clashes between the foot ninja and shredder and you know it's just you know classic shredder classic team and t and then jenica basically because like i said when if you read it she turned from a human into a turtle through blood transfusion and it's basically her comic book is basically following her story of how she's kind of transitioning and trying adjusting to being this turtle before and losing her life as a human. It's really interesting and I enjoyed the first comic book that came out. I can't wait to see what else they have in store for Jenica. Like I said, both of these, they kind of cross over with each other, Team and T and Jenica a little bit, but both great, great, great series. Oh my God. So obsessed with the turtles. <laughs> that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me give you my list of comic books that I'm reading. Like I said, I enjoy reading comic books, so give me a list of some that you're reading so I can check them out as well. Post every videos Friday and Sunday on my channel. Follow me down on my social media and make sure you guys are staying safe out there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for another video.